Hello, everybody. Happy, happy Monday. I know normally on Mondays, we do release a Monday mystery, but today's a very, very special day. As most of you know, I have partnered with a bunch of other ladies to open up a Telegram channel called the Sacred Blue Tent. A lot of you have joined us on those Telegram channels where we have had some awesome live episodes with a bunch of guests. Of course, there on Telegram, we're not watched like we are on other platforms, if you know what I mean, so we can go really deep into information. And I'm so excited because my friend, your friend, Cindy, is going to be on the Sacred Blue Tent tonight on Telegram to be talking about the Divine Feminine. How are you doing, Cindy? I'm great. Thank you. I'm excited to be a part of it. The essence of Divine Feminine. Yes. (laughs) Before we get into our conversation today, I do want to go ahead and I want to show you guys again, as you guys know, as I said before, um, a lot of the people that I have become friends with on this journey on YouTube, I've never really, I've never actually met them in person, but Cindy is someone from my real life. Cindy and I, uh, I've known Cindy for years. I teach at her shala. So we, we had Cindy is my real life friend. So this is sacred garden yoga guys. I know we've got a few people coming into classes. Haven't we Cindy at the yoga school? Yeah, it's been great. So this is the yoga school. Yeah, it's awesome. We just watching the, the communities come together. It's been fun. Absolutely. And so if you go on the website here, I'll put all the links down in the description box below, but you can see all the information offered at, at Cindy's school. And it really, it's not, you know, really for me personally, I kind of want to walk away or, or get away kind of from this idea of like, we're in a studio to perform. No, you're coming into a school to learn. And it's, it's so magical at Cindy's school here. You can come and look at all the schedule. Like here's the schedule right here, guys. And again, for those who are not um, from, are not used to yoga, you don't, are you don't, not from, not from um, Georgia, you can sign up for all some classes, a beginner hit class. Hit on the schedule again. Do what? Hit on the schedule. I think you hit on classes, hit on schedule at the top. Here we go. There you go. That'll show the actual schedule. Yeah. Okay, well, it's got to give it a minute to load. Yeah. You can actually, you know, if you're not living in, in a Georgia, you can come and take some of these. So here we go. So we're filming this on Thursday, guys. So it's, it's a few a few days after when this is airing. But for example, like there is Cindy's teaching tonight at six. So you can sign up and you can, you can take a Zoom class too, right? If you're not from Georgia, they can still do, do Zooms, mm-hmm. right? So here's all the different yes. classes and you can actually hit on the classes, right? And like learn more about which each class has to offer. My computer's being a little bit slow, but you can kind of see that. And again, you got the healing services, events, all the pricing. And then I've also got Cindy's website here as well. So if you want to, if you're interested more in Cindy's services, then you can come to Cindy's website. And I know you're doing a lot of awesome, 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 like private kind of classes and workshops around the divine feminine, correct? Yeah. I mean, we run, um, for instance, tonight we're having a gathering. It's called, I call it enlightened and we do it once a, uh, once a month. And we just talk about different aspects of, uh, philosophy or magic, you know, to, to tonight we're gathering around, uh, because we're in October, and we're in the season of the, the feminine, especially the idea of the witch and how that has been misconstrued over the years. We are uh, having a gathering about what it's like to come out of the broom closet. <laughs> so we call it because there is one thing, <clears throat> you know, saying that you practice or, ex- you know, practicing certain things, certain witchy things. Um, and owning it for yourself, but then there's actually coming out and being more uh, more vocal about it. And it's it's scary. It's a scary process sometimes because there's a lot of like those ideas of the witch wound of persecution and, um, you know, not being, uh, you know, actually feeling like you're going to be harmed uh, uh, by talking about some of these things because of the way uh, that these beliefs and these ideas and traditions were were treated in the past. So anyways, um, we're yeah. gathering tonight just to talk about that. But each, each month we get, we, we gather, and we talk about different things, whether it's crystals or, or, um, astrology or tarot reading, card readings, yeah. whatever, just fun stuff. 
And that's actually something we're going to focus on too. I know we kind of talked before we started filming after we stopped sharing screen here, but y'all, if you do also go to her um, YouTube channel, which again, I'll place the link link, excuse me, down in the description box below. You'll see all sorts of videos here. And Cindy even has some like practices here as well. Um, where you can actually watch some of the practices. Happen. Yeah, there's some yoga practices and I'll be downloading another one of those Let's, soon as well. Here's the half primary series. Our, that's us doing Ashtanga. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's my class on Sunday mornings. It's one of my favorites. Yes. I've told this to Cindy before off, you know, at, at, the, at her yoga school that that class I teach on Sunday mornings at 8.30 is one of my absolute favorite classes and i used to teach um full time you know it was it wasn't until the great event of 2020 that that all shifted for me and now my main focus is is youtube and i have one day a week where i still really do a lot of teaching and sunday mornings i'm at i'm at sacred garden yoga and it is literally my favorite class and i love being there on sunday mornings all the students are just heavenly people they're just all different walks of life and they're all just super super kind people because at the end of the day no matter how different we appear no matter how different our opinions may seem we're all pretty similar and persecution is one thing i think we all fear that you can find in a lot of different different cultures and we know i know i just i was telling you before we started filming that we're, we're now starting our deep dive into voodoo and the traditional word of voodoo was voodoo, or I'm, not, I'm probably not saying that right, but it meant pure light, pure light. It's just the celebration mm -hmm. of that pure light, which is in, inside of us. And, um, and a lot of these practices that have been labeled like witchcraft and all that kind of stuff in the past were literally your knowing, taking your internal knowing, which in, in itself is a form of magic that God has given you using herbs using all these things to try to balance whatever it is with nature. And we started talking about, and you brought this up on uh, Sunday about the idea of, um, and I brought, talked about this in the, the, voodoo, the first voodoo episode I, I released about spell casting. And we know spell casting, we, you know, spell to spelling is, it's, it's called spelling for a reason. It's words or spelling. And so you continue with that, Cindy, because you were talking, you were talking so eloquently about that. Well, the power of the word and the frequency that comes through your throat, you have a power center. We all know that you have an energy center here too, but it's almost like a true power center. And it's your place of, of communication. But right here, in, if you're talking and if you push down, you can actually feel vibration coming out through your throat. And everything responds to frequency, the whole universe, the whole, I'm talking about the whole, it's, it's the language of the universe that, that expands beyond just earth. It's frequency. And you are built also to express this frequency through, um, not through your body for sure, because you're nothing but like this battery, but also through your word. And it's, it's uh, an aspect of manifestation as well. And what you say truly does matter. And it's the, it's the whole idea behind spell, spell casting. It's in, in the power of your word. And even in the Bible, right, it says it, the world was created by the word. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, and, you know, most of us, we kind of speak or we talk or, or we do things unconsciously. We don't realize how much power we really have or how our words are actually transmuting energy and frequency and vibration. And depending on what you're saying and what you're feeling at the time, that energy or vibration can be uplifting. It can be good. It can be happy. It can be joyous. You know, it could be expanding you. Or if you're, if you're uh, speaking words or saying things out of anger or just vile feelings and wanting to hurt someone, that is like black magic. You're literally almost casting a spell of black magic, wishing that person harm. That's the idea behind, you know, spell casting. It is the power of your word, whether you say it. that's why there's there's always, you know, incantations or invocations. And in the yoga lineage, there's, of course, the mantras, yeah. which the, you know, and, and if you, and I know, you know, Todd knows a lot about the mantras and everything, but you don't always necessarily need to know what the mantra means. It's the yeah. power of the vibration of the mantra that being said over and over again, that gives it, that gives it, that gives us its power. 
It's not just yeah. the actual words themselves. And it's the same even with certain prayers. I think, for instance, uh, for those who are more Christian-based, the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful mantra because it's one that was actually spoken by Jesus himself, especially if you say the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, yeah. which was its original language, like the way that Jesus actually said it himself. Yeah. And it real literally, you will feel this vibration moving through you just by chanting it. Again, you don't even really need to know what it means. It's right. just the power of the frequency and, and who said it and, and what it means. So right. we're always kind of, you know, spell casting without <clears throat> even knowing it. And it it's, um, yeah. I mean, that's why, like, I know, you know, yeah. for my Ashtanga classes, as part is uh, part of the contract that I've, you know, worked for my Ashtanga is, we have to call the postures in Sanskrit. We can't call them in English. And the reason being is mm -hmm. Ayurveda, the three elements of healing in Ayurveda is food, breath, and sound, which is vibration. And yes. so if you say a posture in its Sanskrit name, it's going to hit a different vibration than in its English name. So like the posture Utkatasana versus like chair pose. There's a different element of mm -hmm. vibration. And so when the teacher calls it as Utkatasana, it's putting out that vibration into the student before the action of the posture has even started. And you're that's and the are you, same thing with I, I've heard about the, the original Lord's Prayer, that it's just a totally different experience yes. to even hear the Lord's Prayer in its original language versus the English translation or Spanish translation or French translation. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. And, uh, and you, you know, we were kind of talking, but I said this, you know, I get a lot, I know you do too, Cindy, because we're in the South. I get a lot of uh, fundamentalist Christians that send me emails that are um, not so nice, which wishing my, uh, we can't say the D word. So we use, so we use the word Janine says leaving of the earth plane. They want me to, because I promote yoga and you know, all that kind of stuff. And what they don't realize, though, is what they're doing is black magic by sending that email out. That's a form of black magic. Mm -hmm. and, and you said, too, like they have to in order to, to be able to project something like that out of you, you have to embody it. You have to embody you really do. that hate and that nastiness in order to then send it out. And you were talking about that. Sunday. Yeah. That was genius the way you said that. And it's, it's something that think about too for for those you know for for any beings or folks who who practice the the dark arts is that every single time that they cast them it has to move through the vessel of the body in other words it's not like you um you you say it and then it goes around you and then some and, and yes there can be other deities outside of you that play into that particular spell casting but it also has, I mean, it has to pass through you in order for it to get its power. And uh, someone who practices the dark arts, it's, it's, that's like instant karma, if you yeah. think about it. It's like, it, and, it's, and it's the law of karma itself. When you, you put something out, you're going to get it right back. I mean, yeah. almost every tradition says that. In Christianity, in every single tradition, that's just one of the more common laws. Yep. When it, you put something out there, you're going to get it right back. And, and, and that's the same with the, with, uh, when putting out good stuff. But it's also the same thing if you're putting out something that's um, diminishing someone else. It's going to instantly diminish you. But it's going to be like instant because you actually have to hold it. And someone who does that over and over again, it's going to darken them. Yeah. I mean, it's going to, it has an immediate effect. It has, it's, it's going to darken you. It can't not darken you because that's the way the, the magic works. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's, um, no, I, I, yeah. Cause you think about, if you think about it, everybody watching, if you think about the times in your life where you have been supportive of someone you've wished well for people, you've genuinely wanted them and you've put that out there. Good, you know, good success. You, you yourself feel better, you know, but when you're yeah. nasty, you immediately feel that, that energetic response within yourself of that nastiness, you know, and it is, it's, it's the, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's, mm -hmm. it's not just spirits, it's science. It, it, it's, it's the way it works. Science. It's, I mean, it's, it's, the law. it's a real thing. It's the law. It's a true thing. It's, it's in science. 
And, uh, um, but, but I mean, but the good thing is you can clear it. I mean, you can clear karma. It's not like you're stuck with it forever, but there is one thing that, um, and it was one thing that I experienced during the, the ayahuasca. We talked about my ayahuasca experience a, a, a couple of episodes back, but um, one of the things is, you know, I had ancestors, I believe, uh, way back when that probably had their hands in the dark arts. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I had to clear was their karma. So it doesn't just pass down to you. It goes down generations. Yep. So these like these poor little babies, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't really have anything to do, with it. but it passes right. down. That's how powerful it is. So there's a, there's a price to pay. Exactly. With, um, with anything that's that's done within that within that realm, there's going to be a high price to pay, and it's not just you that pays it. It's your uh, the generations that come after you that pay it too. And you it, can clear it again. You can you can if you're conscious about it, you can go in and you can start you know to make amends and clear it, so it's not like it's stuck with you forever. Because we're all you know we're all having this human experience, anyways, and we're always you know at some point we're going to feel angry at somebody. We're going to feel judgy towards somebody. I mean, we're just, we're just going to do it. We're not going to be living as these perfect light beings all the time. It's right. part of the human experience. So, so at the same time, don't feel like, oh, my gosh, you know, you have to. Uh, I mean, yes, what you, what you think about matters and what you say matters. But you can also, you know, make amends and, and clear the stuff. You're not stuck with it forever. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Patabi Joyce used to say, I believe it was Patabi Joyce used to say this. I know Sharat has said it before, my teacher in India, but they would even say, because yoga is, all, is also about clearing karma. And, and actually, and when you clear karma, sometimes it's almost like cleaning out an old closet. You actually have to go through it. You have to actually acknowledge it in order to, to remove mm-hmm. it. And he would say, like, when you practice yoga and you do that, you change you change for seven gen- generations after yeah. And you also clear seven generations behind you as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. I believe that totally, especially after that experience that I had. It, it goes through generations for real. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and then for all of those practicing yoga, we're like, why do I have to do this? <laughs> why couldn't my mama have done this? No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> um, I know it, it can be hard, but. But that is, it's true. You, just like you see, it's like everything that moves through your DNA, through all those vibrations, gets stuck in there. And then that moves through you to the next, to the next generation and so forth and so forth. And I know we know karma. We, we, a lot of times in yoga, we call karma your work. So it's just your work, the work mm-hmm. you have to move through. And you have three different categories of, kar- of karma that each person is working through. Your own personal karma that you've created in this life and your past life, if you believe in that your generational karma, which is your Mm -hmm. DNA. And then your the karma that's happening collectively at your time period that you're in. Yes. So there's also Mm -hmm. collective work that has to happen as well. So how is this affected? Since we're talking about the divine feminine tonight on the sacred blue tent, how does this all, how has this affected the diminishing of the divine feminine, all this idea of spell casting and the confusion and maybe the propaganda around it where we know it's not really true what they said. How has that affected the divine feminine? You talked about the witch wound, which I think that's awesome. I think a lot of women feel that. Even yeah. Well, one it. of the things. Yeah. Well, um, well, when they went through all the persecutions way back, you know, way back when the divine feminine, the sacred feminine, it didn't fit within the narrative that they were wanting to to portray because the narrative a lot was about control. Yeah. And to control someone, you first need to disempower them. And the best way to disempower someone is to, um, to teach them that they can't trust themselves and that their salvation lies outside of them. Well, trusting yourself, that is the intuitive arts. That's the, your connection with the forces of nature and learning how to trust your instinct. That's all the, the, the intuitive arts, you know, cultivating your intuition. And then and the intuitive arts were very much practiced by the feminine, by the sacred feminine. So the, the, the minute you start diminishing the intuitive arts, you're learning how to trust and believe in yourself and to trust in what your body is telling you, to trust in your instincts and your intuition, uh, that, that is, 
that's the divine hymn. That those are the, the the feminine arts. I mean, it's the masculine arts too, but it's largely a lot of that with like even like you said, learning how to uh, work with herbs and and all these things. You know, that's empowering to the person, right? You know, being able to go out and connect with the different elements and to connect with the plants. You know, connect with the plant medicine. That's empowering to you because you're saying, oh, "Well, I can save myself." Right. And that went in direct contrast to the narrative that they were trying to tell, because like I said, you know, an empowered person, you can't control them. You can't manipulate them as easily. If you want to manipulate someone, you tell them, well, you take away their power and you tell them that their salvation lies somewhere outside of them. And that is a direct hit to the sacred feminine. Because the feminine, even in the, the, the gospel of Mary Magdalene, when, I mean, Jesus actually said to her that there is no such thing as like original sin. You're born inherently good, you know? Yeah. And that, that, that sovereignty in essence is yours. And, and, you know, you interpret that as you're, you have the power. I mean, you have everything that you need. But if you take out the, the feminine part, the sacred feminine part, or you diminish, you know, I think what happened is just more of a diminishing of the feminine to like this, what I call the pink realm, <laughs> just the pink realm, not that I have anything, any uh, problem with the color pink, but the pink of just the, the female is kind of, you know, Making she's like the mother, which, you know, she is a mother and she's nourishing and she's soft and she's gentle and she's always accommodating. But that's not only like this much of the feminine. The feminine is also wrathful when she has to be. Uh, she's the, you know, the sacred feminine. It's coming out when her, her, her lion cub or her bear cub is being attacked. Who do you right. think is the one that does the attacking? It's the mom, you know? So yeah. there is like this wrathful aspect of the sacred feminine that is, that comes from love. Do you know right. what I mean? So it's not, it's Fierce not love. just like this yeah. pink little soft, you know, thing where, you know, man can come in and manipulate and do what she wants to with her. But when a woman's uh, essence is truly restored, like truly re- restored with intuitive, with the primal, that primal instinct, you know, the part that actually gives birth and all that. I mean, that stuff is primal and it's, it's, it's bloody, you know, that's also the feminine as well. Well, and, and uh, primal too, yeah, so I always think women have a better way of almost dancing. Sometimes they're able to move that energy is able to move differently. And that's very primal as well. And that's very feminine. Yeah. And in the female body, and I truly believe this is it's an actual portal between dimensions. Like you think of a woman's vagina, <laughs> Yeah. She is literally bringing a soul from fifth, sixth, seventh dimension, wherever that soul comes from, into third dimension. Through her. So, uh, so if you ever wondered whether portals between dimensions exist, yes, it's the woman's body. Isn't that, that awesome? I've <laughs> never even thought about that, but you, you are so right. Like you were so right. And it's funny because in the voodoo, when I was studying the voodoo, they, uh, from what I understand, because I'm not a voodoo practitioner, but they honor the woman because she is the bearer of life. Like it's more of a matriarchal society because the woman is the queen. She is the bearer of life. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Women are, we're seen as weak and we're, you know, petite and, you know, well, Cindy and I literally are petite, but (laughs) we're not, but dynamite comes in small packages. Um, But when you see like, you've seen women do extraordinary things when they're child's in harm's way, like lifting buses off their kids, you know, that, that Mm -hmm. fierceness comes through. So, you know, as you've been talking about this, I know a lot of times when we talk about the divine feminine, we do focus on women because we have gotten the short end of the stick for the few last couple thousand, if not more years, but men also have a divine feminine side as well. That's, and women have a divine masculine side as well. Can you, can you speak a little bit about the divine feminine within the male energy within a male, what that looks like? Yeah. And it's kind of sad too. If you see, I mean, if you really see how the divine feminine has been diminished, it's been diminished within the male himself. Like even if he wants to express emotions, 
how yep. it's not necessarily, uh, you know, appropriate to express certain kind of emotion, sadness, or to express tears. You know, they can be like all angry and macho, but the second that they show some kind of sensitivity, it's not, you know, it's not cool. I mean, I think that's starting to shift and change now. But, yeah. um, but then how that uh, disconnect within their own feminine aspects can also feed it into them harming women too, you know, cause you, if you diminish the, the sensitivity within yourself, you, di you diminish the, the feminine, the sacred feminine just w within the body. If you're a male, you're going to do it to the, um, to the actual females that are in your Physical life as well, or anyone yeah. who is even, you know, or anyone who's like, you know, kind of androgynous in a way, you know, like we, we see a lot of that that's coming up right now because there are some, you know, some women who might have more male and some male that have more feminine. Mm -hmm. And I think that as it, it, it's coming out that the, you know, just the idea of, this holy matrimony of the of the feminine and masculine coming together in a more like balanced kind of a way but yeah i mean the the divine male energy too just within its male aspect that's like very, that's mars you know like the planet mars and it is like this warrior yep. spirit and it's a beautiful thing too and i don't have anything against uh men i actually love men and i'm not like oh, fuck the patriarchy kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i mean but but yeah. uh I mean, it, but it is time to, you know, to, to restore it and to find the balance. But yeah, the, the sacred male energy is actually quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. And when I think the male and the female can equally be acknowledged, then we can coexist in, in, in a more harmonious way without, you know, the man having to diminish the female or the female being like, oh, you know, patriarchy sucks, like yeah. kind of a thing. I think we, we're moving through into an age where um, we're, we're, we're needing to integrate that instead Absolutely. of just being angry. It's like the being man being the angry at the female, the female being angry at the, at the man, you know, to heal those wounds that have been created, you know, a, a lot of it, I think on purpose to create that divisiveness. Absolutely. You know, if you want to manipulate a species, create divisiveness between them and, and Hey, you know, create the divisiveness between the two main species, male yeah. and female. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. Cause I, that's the one thing about feminists that annoy me today is that they want to get rid of men. I'm like that. No, I had a teacher tell me once when I was in high school that being a feminist, did not mean that you wanted to be identical to a man. It, mean, it meant you wanted to be equal to a man, not identical. Yeah, yeah. And so we're seeing, no. I agree, we have to have, and we talked about that. I think we talked about with Mary Magdalene and Jesus. Of course, the church destroyed Mary Magdalene and ripped her away from the picture and made her a prostitute and all that kind of stuff. But that they were the balance of both masculine and feminine energy. They were the yin and the yang of those mm -hmm. two. And you know, because you, you're kind of, you're, you done a lot of research into Mary Magdalene's. They kind of worked with each other, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, they were in ministry together. Yeah. The way I see it and the way I understand it. I mean, they were, they were doing it together and Jesus wasn't diminishing Mary Magdalene mm -hmm. or and the fact that she was a prostitute. I mean, I don't think that's real at all. No, you know, that was I a church really think her. That she was a high priestess mm -hmm. when one and that, and that she was, well, like if you think of a high priestess too in the, the intuitive you know, we're talking about the intuitive arts. And I've taught, you know, we were talking about this before in class, how even in the Bible, once Jesus resurrected, you know, she went into his tomb to go find him and she sees two angels. She actually sees them. Mm -hmm. So she's like clairvoyant. You yeah. Know? So she has these ability, these abilities, these psychic gifts. I'm always curious to know which angels, like, what did you really, who, which angels did you really see, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, then they what needed to go to these her. these beings that you saw? Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, and that's kind of where we got the blue tent name because Mary Magdalene's line was the uh, Order of the Sacred Blue Rose, which everybody knows that's on Diana's, um, one of her monuments 
is the sacred the order of the sacred blue rose and i know we've talked a lot cindy about the cathars which were um kind of the descendants of mary's teaching after she went mm -hmm. through france and um that whole area of the south of, of france and um do you want to speak a little bit about the cathars you know i don't actually know too much about them though you might know i mean i know that there were some of the early christians and mm -hmm. that they also got pretty annihilated there yeah. the end, but i don't really know too 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 much about them but they one thing that um i will say just about mary and being a, a priestess too is um you know she had her alabaster jar mm -hmm. and she was always carrying like these oils around and that was a tradition of the priestesses and there's you know special oil what was the oil um spik spikenard or something like that that she was using yeah. but she anointed jesus and to anoint someone that was always giving given to someone who had more of a higher power you know like was an actual priestess yeah. of some sort of another i got so bummed so, um, yeah y'all and we're learning that yeah but back to the cathars i don't know too much about them you, you may know carried, more about them than i do they carried on more of the traditional because we've i think cindy we've talked about this before the original christians um and i know that the mm -hmm. fundamentals need to hear this but the original christians were mystics they were mystics oh yeah and the gnosis the gnostic text which gnosis means inner knowing um, and they believed in that divine spark of life. They really focused on it. And the original Christian, what we would call churches today, were more like schools. They were schools where you were taught. And that was Jesus' whole message, was that you have that sovereignty. You have that ability within you, which is what you were just saying, like learning that that's, again, the divine feminine. And the Cathars were definitely um, persecuted and were completely mm -hmm. annihilated by the Catholic Church. Um, mm -hmm. you know, which, uh, that's a whole other topic in itself, but, uh, you know, a lot of these are the original Christian groups were taken out because they were dangerous to the powers that be. But I feel like, and I think it was the Cathars that had a prophecy that at the end of, at the end of time, which we know we're not at the end of the world, we're at the end of a timeline and we're coming mm -hmm. into a new timeline. So I think that's what they all meant that a lot of these ideas, a lot of these teachings would resurface again. And, the, and the, there was also a prophecy about all the banned books would start to resurface again. And we are seeing that happen. We're seeing that slowly start to happen. If you look over the past 100 years, yoga has made its way through the world. People are starting to realize there's more to themselves than just their physical body, that there's a power inside that kind of expresses itself through the physical body, but is also separate from the physical body. We're starting to realize we don't need pastors to guide our lives. We don't need rabbis to guide our lives. We don't need, we just need ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's such a powerful, and that again, that is the divine feminine, that intuitive knowing, that gut knowing, um, which men possess as well. Animals possess it. Animals have that ability. Yeah. That, and, and I think with the mix, you know, with Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene coming in, that especially coming in so potent right now is to mend mend some of those teachings and to fill in the gaps and to restore the teachings back to what they originally were you know i feel like they really want that this aspect of the say like this the, the the lineage of the the christ you know the christ lineage the magdalene lineage the mother mary lineage all that is coming in right now to, to try to heal that and to mend it and to, you know, restore it back to what the original teachings were. Mm -hmm. And not in a horrible, judgmental kind of way, but just to say, hey, you know, you've, you've been, you've just been misinformed. You haven't right. had the whole truth. And this is, this is the truth. This is, this is the way. I mean, the, the, the um, teachings of Mother Mary, it's called like the way, the way of the rose, yeah. too, you know, cause, because Mary, Mother Mary was also, Mother Mary Magdalene had the same lineage. Yeah. And uh, uh, to restore the way, the way of the rose, the, the way of the heart, too. The rose often sig signified the, the, the embodiment of the fully open heart, you know, and living right. from your, your heart space. 
and the mysteries of Mary Magdalene, they, they used a lot the chalice, the symbol of the chalice, and that the chalice was the mysteries of the, the divine through the body, that your, your physical body was an actual chalice that, that holds all the mysteries, you know, so that your body, you're not born in sin or anything like that. So, you know, the mysteries of the chalice, the way, the mysteries of the rose, it's all kind of, you know, the, the same thing, but that's what's wanting to come, come through now, the part that has been missing, the part that has been buried, literally, right? Literally. Buried in the yeah. sand. <laughs> Literally. Yes, literally. Yes. <laughs> Some of those books were literally and buried with people in tombs. They had to actually know. open tombs to find them, these books. So <laughs> yeah. And um and yeah, it's and it's so and I think about that too, because you think about like if you go back and I even at 38 years old, like when I don't feel good sometimes, I want my mama. You know, like we all want our moms. And so you think about the divine feminine, especially with Mother Mary, we're going through this time period where we're kind of like healing our boo-boos, our wounds. Mm -hmm. So who's no more beautiful to come through than the divine mother to come in and comfort us and put the Neosporin on the boo-boo and like, you know, and show you, show humanity in a very loving way. Um, I know in the voodoo tradition, as I've researched, the women were represented by earth and water and the men were represented mm -hmm. by air and fire. And so you think of the earth mm -hmm. and the water, the grounding, the, the, and a woman, we know in y yoga, women are more pranic, which is downward energy, where men are more pranic upward, which is the same thing. Pranic is like fire. It's, it's the sun. It's, you know, the, so how beautiful it, is that? Just to, with the idea of descending, descending to ascend, the, a lot of the female energy is a descending energy. It's a coming down. It's like a coming in to, to your humanity. And if you think of even in the yogic tradition, you got Prakriti, yeah. which is the world of matter and the world of form. And Prakriti was, is the female side. Yeah. And Shakti, the same thing, the world of matter, Sophia yeah. of, uh, yeah. of the Gnostic teachings. It's the same like Sophia, Shakti, Prakriti, they're kind of, in, in my eyes, they're kind of the same. Yeah. But they descend like Sophia had to descend um, yes, earth and water descend. There's a gravitational pull downward to come into your embodiment. It's about like embodiment instead of all being out of body. Everything being out of body is very um, like more, uh, more of the patriarchy teachings, you know, yeah. where the female teachings descend first, descend to ascend. Yeah. And then it, it happens in that holy matrimony. It's like Beautiful. the descending and the ascending nature meet. And that's the Christ consciousness too. It's, yeah. it's the union. It's the union of, of the polarities, the coming together of all like these opposing forces. And it's the same thing. I mean, I mean, we can keep going on to the stories the way it's fed in, like the Eden, the Pingala. Yeah. You yeah. have the Eden, the Pingala that move up. Yes. We, uh, we explain the, that to the people. The opposing forces. And when the opposing forces come in balance through the Edom uh, Pingala, the prana can then shoot up your Shashuna, your main energy center, which is the Kundalini awakening, and that's the enlightenment. So it's yes. told in so many different stories and in so many different ways I that, I mean, the truth out there. <laughs> and that's one thing they've tried to do. They, they've tried to make Kundalini this bad thing, but it's not. It's it, They've inverted everything. It's not bad. Guys, what she's talking about, the two, it's in its um, physical representation, it comes through your nostrils. So the two nostrils that go into the body and Shashumna goes up your spine. That's why you've seen a lot of um, yoga practices, Tai Chi, a lot of these ancient physical practices that revolve around a spiritual theory um it's focuses on the spine because that's the mm -hmm. physical you can physically feel the spine even though it's just a huge energetic. energy channel that runs up your spine it's the biggest energy channel yep and yep. you have a very potent form of prana called the kundalini yep and it's coiled it's, it's just prana it's energy but it's just a lot it's a very potent energy and it's, it's kind of coiled at the base of your spine. Yeah. Well, in order for it to ascend and to awaken up your spine, you first have to balance the Eda and the Pingala, yeah. which are the opposing forces. Mm -hmm. The hot and the cold, the male, the female, the sun, the moon, anything that you can think about, you know, the left and the right side of the brain, the left and right side of your body, all of that. 
yep. once that comes into balance and they, where they and where they eat in the pingala intersector where your energy centers are. Yeah. And That's, when yeah. they are in balance, it's when they're in balance that the Shashumna awakens and the Kundalini can begin to come up, come up, come up. And when it shoots up through the crown of the head, that's like the ascent, the, the ultimate ascension, the ultimate enlightenment. Yep. And they but tried, it has to come through this balance, you know? Yeah. And they the, try to make the, that. The male, the female, the sacred feminine, the, sa the, the sacred the male. I mean, every, the polarity is bringing together because, you know, when it, when the world was manifested, it had to pull apart because that's how manifestation happens. Things have to pull up, but there has to be opposites. Yep. I mean, there has to be, there has to be cold to no uh, heat. There has to be, you know, dark to no light, you know, so the world was kind of, or the, uh, this world was kind of pulled apart into all these different energies, opposing energies. And the way back is you got to pull it all back together again, back to the ascension. Does that make sense? But you yeah, have to like go I mean, through it. I was okay. just thinking about the garden of Eden with the tree, the eating from the knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Those again are opposing forces, the understanding of the, of, of the, the, of the opposites. And yeah. And guys, if you're more interested in what she's saying, first of all, you can find a teacher if you're not as, wherever you are. Alternate and nostril breathing will teach you a lot about the different, yeah. um, opposing because each nostril you'll find one of your nostrils this is such a yoga thing i don't know if people who don't practice yoga probably don't even pay attention to their nostrils but you'll find one of your nostrils <laughs> way more powerful than the other one and you'll start to recognize that over and over again and so it helps you understand where maybe there's some like imbalance happening within the mm -hmm. two different it's it's fascinating but then some times of day you're naturally going to have one natural nostril stronger than the other and the other times of day it's so freaking fascinating and this is all this is not i hate when people call this new age stuff because it's actually like this old sacred teaching old, <laughs> old. Yes. it's older than anything like this is like so the <laughs> humans were like listen this is what's up and then we got involved we're like no no no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but but they've you know the powers that be that want to control us throughout the centuries um they've made kundalini dark they act like that's a bad thing they've tried to separate you from yourself because yeah it's about finding salvation outside of yourself when that's not even possible it's not even possible talk about tr tracing mm -hmm. the unattainable yeah. porn. you it has to come inside it has to be in here yeah you know? and then create Creating separation between the male and the female, too. I mean, you know, let's see how much separation we can create between that and let's really screw things up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I just imagine, I mean, I, it's hard to think about a world where all of this will come out and people will start understanding it more because we've just never been in that place. But what a beautiful world that's going to be. Now, guys, I have to jump off soon because I have to go on another call. But we are now, Cindy, we are going to be again tonight. We are going to be on the Sacred Blue Tent channel where Cindy is going to be discussing the Divine Feminine, touching on the Gospel of Mary with Sabrina Gall in Toronto on the Sacred Blue Tent channel. So I've had a couple of you ask me about that. There's a Sacred Blue Tent chat and there's a Sacred Blue Tent channel. The chat is just a place for people to kind of share information with each other where the channel is where we do the live shows. So Telegram is not on YouTube, it's on, the, it's on your phone, it's an app. And so you have to go and get the app on the App Store, I think it's a free app, and then you'll just search for the Sacred Blue Tent Telegram, the channel. You'll see the emblem, and when the show starts at 8 p.m. tonight, Eastern Time, that's 5 p.m. over in California. So wherever you are in the world, wherever 8 p.m. Eastern Time is, just do the math from wherever you live. Um, you will join. You'll hit the join button once you go open up the channel and you'll see the icons there. You, This is a live show. So Cindy will be speaking first along with Sabrina Gow and some other members of the tent. And then after the conversation is over, we will open up for everybody to ask questions. So your little icon will be muted. And then once that's over, you'll be able to raise, the icon can raise its hand and you can ask Cindy a question live on the Sacred Blue Tent channel. Um, for those who cannot join us for that show because you have something going on or it's like two o'clock in the morning where you live, no worries. We record every single episode. So you will be able to go back and re-listen to it. And of course, if you if there's a question you have that wasn't answered, 
you can find Cindy. I'll put all of her links down in the description box below so you can get in touch with her. I'm so excited. I'm hoping that this will be the first time of many that Cindy comes into the sacred blue tent. Um, blue also means an educated woman. So that's another um, definition of blue. And Cindy is definitely that. So, um, so Cindy, I'm so excited. And on uh, Tuesday night, tomorrow night, we're going to be covering the sacred masculine. So sacred oh. feminine. Yeah, we've got some men coming on that are going to be discussing. Hey, today. I love it. I love it. I love right. it. No, I talk think about they, it. it needs to come in. You know, um, examples need to start coming through of what the divine feminine embodiment looks like, what the divine masculine embodiment looks like. And you know, yeah, I, think, I love it. I think Todd, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Cindy, but my boyfriend, I find him, he's a pretty good embodiment of both masculine yeah. and feminine. Yeah. He's very sensitive and Absolutely. very calm and you yeah. know, very patient, and that, but he's also a man and very alpha. And I know we have David Zublick coming on Tuesday night as well. Cause he's enough. And I'm actually going to try to get you Cindy. I, I mentioned it to David to bring you on the, his show as well. The dark outpost to talk about Mary more too, once we get through the yoga section. So, so y'all are going to be seeing Cindy everywhere. So, <laughs> so, well, thank you so much, Cindy. I, obviously you'll be back again and guys, we will see you all tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time on the Sacred Blue Tent Telegram channel. Please, again, go subscribe to Cindy's channel. She's awesome. If you're in the area, come join us for a class. If you're not in the area, join mm -hmm. us for a Zoom class. <laughs> any, yes. any, any last Thank words, you. Thank you, everybody. All right, bye, bye. guys. Bye.